Hi everybody, I'm Susan Mulvihill. Welcome back. I live in Spokane, Washington. The hardiness zone is 5B here, although most of Spokane is actually in zone 6. Now we live in a rural area and we have a big vegetable garden and it gives us so much joy and so much food. But I realize that this is the exception to the rule. Most folks tend to have a smaller garden or maybe no garden at all because they live in an apartment or a condo where there's just not room for a garden space. So I have a perfect solution to that. Follow me. Why not grow your garden in a vertical planter like this? Last year, I was contacted by the Greenstock Garden folks. They asked if I would like to try one of their vertical planters. And I thought, you know, I've been hearing about it. I'm curious how well it works. So I said, yeah, please send me one. I grew berries, flowers, and veggies in it all last summer. And they did great. And it was so nice having something right outside my kitchen door. and Very easy to tend and very easy to work with. So this is the second year that I'm going to grow some plants in my green stock vertical planter. And I wanted to show you how it works and also let you know that they have a big sale going on for Mother's Day and it is from May 2nd through May 9th. So I'm gonna give you more information about that later in the video. Now, before I get started planting, I wanted to explain why I like green stock vertical planters. For one thing, they are made in the USA. That's good. It's a family-run business, which I think is cool. And also they use food-safe plastic, so no BPAs, no PVCs, and so on. So those are all good reasons. It's definitely very well designed, well manufactured. I didn't have any kind of problems with it whatsoever. Okay, let's do some planting. Now the first part that's very important is what they call the green stock mover. This is a little wheeled addition, which makes it really easy to move the planter should I need to. I can turn it very easily and I can lock them in place in case we have a really strong windstorm. Now I never had to do that last year, but I was always envisioning that it might be walking across the patio. <laughs> But anyway, so this goes on the very bottom and then there's five tiers like so. And that goes on the top. The routine is to fill each tier individually with potting soil and each one takes about a cubic foot of potting soil and then plant them and then assemble the whole planter with all five layers. So that's what I'm going to do first is put soil into each of these five tiers. I chose an organic potting soil since I'm going to mostly be growing veggies in my planter. So I'm going to fill these tiers up to about an inch below the rim. And I'm just pressing it down a little bit because once it gets watered, it's going to settle. Okay, one down, four to go. That looks pretty good. Okay, next up is planting each of the tiers. I grew strawberries in one of the tiers last year. And it was so cool to have them right outside the kitchen door. So that's what I want to do again this year. Now, each of these tiers has six glow pockets. And the idea is to plant them right near the outer edge of each pocket and even leaning out a little bit so that when the whole planter is put together they're able to grow unimpeded and they're not running into the tier up above it and they get plenty of sunlight now 
variety of strawberry that I picked is Quinault, which is a very good one for this region. This one's a tiny little strawberry. Hopefully it'll do okay. And I'm surrounding them with soil at the same height as the soil was in the little pony pack that they were growing in. You don't want to bury strawberries deeply. Okay, there's the first tier. A funny thing I wanted to mention about growing strawberries in here last year is that they were never bothered by robins or other types of berry loving birds. And I think it was because they just didn't figure they were growing within some type of a vertical container. So that worked out well. Now each time I plant a tear, what I'm going to do is insert a water reservoir onto the top here. And if you can see, there are little holes which correspond to each of these grow pockets. So I'm going to point each hole directly towards the pockets. And that way, when the container is watered, the water goes right into where the plants are growing. I really like this system. Okay, the next thing I'm going to plant is Patapeno pepper plants. These are young seedlings that Bill started and it's a little bit early for me to be planting them, but I wanted you to have this video early enough. So I have a secret weapon that I'm going to show you near the end of this video, so be sure to stay tuned. Potapeno peppers are a variety that is an All America Selections winner, and we grew them last year both in the garden and in the vertical planter and they did great and they're very spicy <laughs> of course i'm a spice wimp so bill took advantage of that Now just like last year, I'm going to add some flowers to one of the tiers, and that's because I like the idea of drawing pollinators to this planter. Now this is an apricot colored verbena called Obsession Apricot. Isn't that pretty? These will get about 10 to 12 inches tall, so not too big and unruly. <laughs> And I didn't want to choose a trailing plant because I didn't want to risk having it block the light from certain plants below it. For the last two tiers, I'm going to plant seeds rather than seedlings. I didn't try that last year, so I wanted to see how it would go. We did start mellow yellow bush beans from seed and planted seedlings directly in here, and they were awesome. So this year what I'm going to do is poke a couple of bean seeds into each of the pockets and I'll see how the two grow. If it's too crowded, I'll thin down to a single plant. But I do love beans.
For this last year, I'm growing a type of lettuce called Bunte Forellenschluss, and it has a speckled leaf. I've grown it before. I love it. And so I'm going to plant a few seeds in the outer edges of each of the pockets. And then I can thin those down as well. And they don't need much covering of soil. Okay, everything is planted. Now I'm going to get Bill's help to assemble the whole planter. Peppers first. There we go. <laughs> Strawberries. Strawberries next. There we go. Flowers. Last year I put the flowers all the way at the top and then it was hard to see them and enjoy them so I decided I was putting them in the second highest chair this year. There we go. And the lettuce. I think that's it. Thank you. The last part of the assembly is to put this large water reservoir on the top. This is where I'm going to water into from the top of the planter and then it will filter down through carefully placed holes into each of the tiers. Now I'm going to pour water into the top. And I'll need to do this a few times today just because this is the first time this potting soil is getting any type of moisture. So I wanna make sure that everything is well watered. Now, before I show you the secret weapon, I wanted to explain something important to you. I will never recommend a product that I don't think is well made and useful. In the case of the Greenstock Garden, I think it is both. It is a great addition to a small garden, a large garden, or if you have no garden at all, look at the small footprint that it takes up. And yet I have in this five tier model, 30 pockets to plant in. So what a great way to grow veggies, herbs, flowers, berries, whatever you want to grow into something that doesn't take up a lot of space. And if you get the casters for the bottom, it's very portable. So I think it's just a great product. Now I mentioned how they have a sale going on right now. And if you're interested in getting a green stock garden, at checkout, put in the promo code SUSAN and you'll get an extra $10 off. You know, we gardeners love a good deal, right? So don't forget to do that anytime you're interested in ordering something. It only works if your order is $75 or more, but hey, an extra $10 off is great. So what is the secret weapon you ask? How about a frost protection cover that is specifically made for the green stock garden? <laughs> And since I mentioned I'm shooting this video a little earlier than I normally would and planting a couple of things that are tender, this is going to work perfectly. So this is another option from the Greenstock Garden folks. Let me show you how it goes on. So this cover has a heavy duty marine zipper and you just unzip it. And then Bill's gonna help me put it on. And it just fits right over the top. There we go. 
and then I just have to zip it shut. The cool thing is there's even a tag on here that says, made with love, Maria Mendoza. Thank you, Maria. And there it is, snug as a bug in a rug. Thanks so much for watching today, everybody. I'll see you next week.